This is the Seller Process Podcast, where we talk about the best systems, processes, and SOPs for your Amazon business so that you can regain control of your time, build up your team, and scale your e-com empire. Hello, entrepreneurs. Gianmarco here. If you think it's the time for you to step back from daily operations and work on your business and not in your business, then this episode is for you. Today, we'll share with you the SOP on how to create SOPs so that you can train your VAs and teammates to help you build and take care of all the processes inside your company. To share his knowledge with us, we brought to the show a successful Amazon seller, Reggie Young. He's a seven-figure Amazon seller and digital marketing expert. He recently sold his Amazon business for over $600,000. He's passionate about topics related to business, travel, and mindset. Reggie continues to launch new brands across different forms of e-commerce, and he also consults for other entrepreneurs and aggregators who are looking to achieve success online. So welcome, Reggie. How are you doing, man? Doing well. Thank you very much for having me. Excited to be on. Great, great. So, Reggie, uh, you created this uh, SOPs to create SOPs, right? So that's going to be, we, we will have fun <laughs> with, with this uh, kind of wording. So I'm curious, you know, to begin with, uh, who is this for? And uh, uh, but by that, I mean, uh, we, who you, do you give this, uh, um, this uh, SOP to? Is it like your first time uh, BAs? Like af- how long d- uh, do people take in your team to be able to actually uh, use this kind of SOPs and make their own SOP? So just give us some initial context and then we will dive into this process of creating SOPs. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for my system, creating and learning about SOP, standard operating procedures, checklist guides, whatever you want to call it, is probably the first or second thing that uh, any virtual assistant or anyone on my team will learn if they end up working with me. Part of my onboarding training series, once they are onboarded onto my project management system, the first thing they do is learn how to communicate with the team. And the second thing they learn is the importance of an SOP and how to create one for themselves. Um, and so I, I make it a pretty critical part of my business. I think it's a, it's a, it's a vital function of any business. You know, we think about business being a collection of systems, SOPs in my opinion are the foundation of that system that allows for autonomy and for the movement of uh, business processes. Okay. Okay. I understand. Is there any say probation period, uh, that you, um, let pass before you actually um, give these people your your VAs the the um, these SOPs or like uh, anyone who is in your team can actually have you know is empowered to create SOPs. Yeah, anyone anyone in the team is actually empowered to create an SOP. Normally, I, if I find myself or if I think the task is either very very important or repeatable beyond, some people will say if it's repeatable more than once, then. then they should create an SOP on it. I believe it's repeatable more than three or four times. Uh, then I generally like to have an SOP created. I trust all my virtual assistants to be able to make an SOP, honestly, within five hours of working inside of my business in terms of uh, the layout, how easy I make it to create an SOP, the templates that I have to create one. Um, I, I usually try to empower them really early on, uh, but I don't just trust them with the most important SOP, the most important function of the business. I normally watch them, give them a smaller task or a, a lower value SOP and watch them execute that task. And if they do that well and flawlessly, then I can kind of uh, expand their area of responsibility. Uh, and with that, they then they can start creating an SOP for themselves, whether it's a small task or a large task, kind of just feel it out depending on the virtual assistant and, and their quality of work. Okay. Okay. That's clear. All right. So let's dive deep into the the uh, the, the SOPs. Uh, so uh, can you give us like the general structure of this SOP, and then and then we will dive deeper into each part of uh, of it. And by the way, guys, you you know uh, as always in every episode, you will find the complementary resources in the show notes, so you will be able to download the SOPs that we are talking about in the in the show notes. You will find a link there at uh, thesellerprocess.com or in the description in the in the YouTube video. All right, so Reggie, let's go and see the structure of the SOP on how to create SOPs. Sure, yeah. If I could really quickly talk about the first, the importance of an SOP. So my background uh, before I became an entrepreneur, uh, digital nomad was I spent the last five years as a nuclear missiles officer in the Air Force. 
And what I was responsible for was the execution and launch of up to 50 nuclear missiles, if told to by the president of the United States. And with that responsibility comes a really long checklist uh, and a very, very defined set of steps. And being able to execute a checklist, regardless of if you can communicate with the outside world or not, has taught me a lot about how to create an SOP in in the most strenuous environments so that all users know how to use it um, and that it can continually be frictionless, but still accomplish the task of the mission. So that's kind of the experience that I've put into this SOP, um, into the structure of it. Now, there's all these different ways to create an SOP, but one thing I generally like to do is to create a video, a video guide first, so that overall arching breakdown of what it looks like. And of course, links down, down below in the description, but I always have a video, either me talking about the steps, laying it out step by step, or going through a fast iteration of it, or I'll link to another YouTube video that will generally be at the very top. After that, I have an overview section, and that overview section is just a short paragraph describing what the SOP is, the overall process, maybe the the top critical warning to look after, um, and why the SOP is important. So I I also believe it's important to give a why behind a checklist so that when you give a why, the person executing the checklist can see that if something changes over time, they know the intent of the checklist and how how to update that. One thing I also do is the other structure below that is that we put who last edited the SOP just for tracking purposes, which you can see in Google Docs anyway, um, which is the platform we use to create SOPs quickly and easily. After that, we have the estimated time to complete a task so that the person knows the range in which the task should be completed. And then we break down the steps, step one, step two, all the way to the end uh, in a very nice, clear, consistent manner. After that, uh, when everything's done, I, I may have a section called reference or notes, and that's just additional information that is not required to complete a task, but maybe uh, good information for a virtual assistant to explore, to either expand more on a topic or to just sharpen their skill set for that specific task. So that's the overall structure that I like to follow. All right. You said the, the main part or, or the, the ones that you put on top, which is one of the most important parts, which I agree, is the video, right? So can you give us some suggestions on how to make a, a great video SOP? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I love the software Loom, L-O-O-M dot com. Now, there's thousands of softwares out there like that. You know, there's Nimbus, there's uh, Awesome Screenshot, which is like another free one. There's a bunch of free and paid tools out there. They're all slightly different depending on the use case. Uh, but what it is is a screen screen recording tool that will automatically record your screen while uploading to the cloud simultaneously. Uh, most of these softwares will automatically transcribe video for you, which makes it very useful for a virtual assistant whose English may not be their first language, uh, especially me. I don't really talk that clearly sometimes when I get excited and I create a video SOP. So having a, a shareable link that you can embed and share amongst other users, one that which, depending on the software, you can edit after, blur out, you can uh, share with other users outside of the organization if that's allowed, and uh, it just makes it super easy. So I normally start by using that tool. Um, and then when it comes to creating the actual video, what I like to do, depending on how much time I have, if it's a very, very critical task, I'll open up all the tabs, have it ready to go, think about the process before I actually do it. And then I'll try and record myself doing the process from beginning to end. I'll say, hey, this is the SOP on this. This is why it's important. This is the overall goal and objective. This is where you should be careful about all the things that I kind of mentioned before. Uh, I may show example websites that I may be looking for example products or example services example influencers just try to give an example from there i'll step through each step and then when it's done uh, i will almost always even say make sure you're referencing the steps down below um, and when the video is done after that i will link that video uh, in the top of the sop or i may actually give that video to a virtual assistant and have them build out the steps of what i mentioned in the video and that allows them to internalize the steps in the video allows them to see what steps are being missed it allows them to like actionalize everything Um, And it just helps them learn more. What they'll do is I'll say, hey, here's the video link, create this uh, SOP for me to review. I'll probably review the SOP depending on how important it is or how well the VA is. If the SOP looks good, then it's complete. And uh, then we take it from there. We may hyperlink it to other SOPs depending on uh, on what we want. But overall, that's generally the, the video process that I go through. Okay, wow, that's interesting. I think it's it's smart and you create first the video and then you have the VA uh, create the, the written part, basically, you, like transcribing in a way the steps that you mentioned in the in the video. I think that's that's a smart thing. But I'm curious to ask you, a common problem with videos is that after you record it, 
obviously uh, it, it's it, it you cannot modify it right it, instead it, mm -hmm. if it's a like a written uh, sop you can always modify it a little bit right so what happened because we we know that sops are always changing you know sometimes the process changes mm -hmm. you improve it so what do you do in that case do you re-record yes. the video yeah well you know business always changes therefore the process and the sop the checklist will always change um, and that's why it's important. Uh, and the, one of the training videos that I have for this SOP is, is changing the mindset behind knowing that this SOP isn't a, isn't a, a one all be all done document. It's a leave. It's a living, breathing document that will change over time. The video is meant to be an overview. It's meant to give them a quick process once over. Um, but it's ultimately the steps that matter the most. And that's something that I even put in the SOP is, I'll have a text that say, this is the video overview, always reference the instructions. And the, bet, the the great thing about always referencing the instructions is you can hold people accountable. You can say, hey, I'm stuck at step two, part A. You can, as the process changes, immediately go in as you, the user, the manager, whoever's doing the task can go in and update the SOP. Uh, and then from there, even from a manager's perspective, you can see, are, are is the virtual assistant actually looking at the SOP, um, which is a whole other thing when it comes to referencing a checklist. Um, it, when I was a nuclear missiles officer, we used to call the term RF, uh, RTFQL or something like that, but basically it's read, read the F in checklist, Re read the full checklist, uh, because we tend to just watch a video, understand something and say, hey, we got this. Um, instead of having to retrain and all that kind of stuff, it's important to, to look at those steps every single time so that you can immediately update them. Uh, it's just a su super, super critical. And one thing I do is if it does get too long or the process changes significantly enough, I'll go ahead and I'll submit or I'll redo the video or I'll, or I'll append to the video. I'll make a short two minute loop and I'll say, hey, here are the process that have changed since this video. Or if it's a well enough document and the document is old enough that the VA knows how to do that. And I'll have the VA create the video, which builds their confidence to expand beyond making an SOP beyond text. Then they start making the SOP in a video format. Uh, and then these SOPs start to build themselves completely. Right. Okay. That's interesting. So do you ever let your VAs actually record the video or it's always you in this case? <laughs> no, I, I let my VAs record the video depending on, on what it is. Um, yeah, it just depends on what it is. Sometimes I'll just, there's things that I don't know how to do in my business. You know, I, I've communicated the goal, the project, my intent, um, and they'll get it done. And then I'll say, hey, just if you can, just create an SOP on this process. And I'll even look at the SOPs myself and be like, oh, this is how they solve this problem. Now, at least I'm aware of that from my perspective. I find that uh, most virtual assistants don't like to record themselves uh, and they don't like to you know, speak the language. They're used to writing that language out. Uh, but I do encourage them to, to make a video if they want. And I, I do have paid software for them to, to create that. One of the big things that when you're using these video softwares is you want to preferably use a paid version because if you use a free version, you're limited in, in the time in which you can record. And then it, the video also expires over time. So I think it's, you know, ever we all hate paying subscriptions. I hate it. Like I'm, I'm a cheapo, like I hate paying subscriptions, but uh, these screen recording tool software is, I think, absolutely critical uh, for working remotely between people, whether it's communicating remotely and or just building SOPs that live on cloud hosted. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. That that's a, that's a good tip because uh, we, we always, you know, try to to save some bucks, but sometimes, you know, uh, really you need to uh, you, you need to invest obviously in in your business structure. So in this case, it's these are well invested money, right? So uh, I like these tips about you know create making the the text version the most important one, so that you know people always reference to that instead of the video, which is you know mostly guidelines lines so i like that part and you know uh, moving on with the the next part that you mentioned in in, uh, in this sop is that that you you uh, write about the goal and the why and the warnings uh, of the of the sop is there any tips or like recommendation that you can give us in order to, to write that part yeah i think you know the, the perspective of the of how i built this the this process or this sop specifically like i said comes from this environment where i had to read the checklist with absolute clarity in the most stressful situation, underground, not being there. And with that, I've tried to build a system that makes it easy for all users to use. So there is no perfect way to do it. You can always make an SP look prettier. You can always make it a lot more detailed, right? You can always tell them to expand more on every single step. Next thing you know, they're spending 30 minutes to make an SOP that takes two minutes to do, that they may forget or not reference, right? So um, the process is, is, uh, is pretty important. I think one of the biggest things that people mess up is they're either too specific 
or they're not specific enough. And that's why I handle that objection with the video first, or that video overview, and then that breakdown by the virtual assistant to break down those steps. I think one of the other biggest things is people tend to put a action step after a warning, or they put an action step after the warning or before the warning. So basically it'll say, um, let's say you're ordering inventory or something like that from, from, from a Chinese supplier, right? It'll say order in step one would say, or step three would say order inventory. And then step four would say, or three a would say, make sure that the purchase invoices is on there or that the legal disclaimer is signed, the triple N agreement, something like that. Right. Well, if you put that warning after the step, the step's already done. You, they can't go back sometimes depending on what that is. And that's probably like the second biggest mistake I've seen in, in high level checklist SOPs is making sure things are in order and concise. The other thing is breaking them down. So if, if I create a video and it's just pretty general, hey, this is the process I want, please go figure it out and make an SOP. Sometimes I'll do that. I'll make it super general. If Even if it's very specific, it's a, a very important to break things down to, into steps. If you can, each line item should be an action. So um, if you're making a logo, step one, open Canva. Step two, uh, identify product template. Step three, add vector, instead of just going make a logo, right? So it's important to understand the skill set of someone who would be using that SOP may not be the same skill set as the person generating the SOP. So they have to have that broad awareness on who the users are in that case uh, and try and pull all this together. And really just comes with training your team and empowering them and then just giving them, giving them slight feedback. And that's the great thing about using a Google Drive document instead of a PDF document that's exported and hard-coded. The Google Drive document can be immediately changed and it's quick and it's easy. As long as they have a nice, good template and a good process, it, it's the constant iteration that helps. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I, I really like the this tip about adding the warnings because uh, um, it, that's that's how actually the SOP will improve itself. You know, every time you, you find something that goes wrong, you know, you make sure that it is already in the SOP as a warning or you, you add it if, if it's not there. So after mm -hmm. several months, after several iteration of the same SOP, basically you will get like a perfect, let's say perfect in a way, SOP that has in it all the warnings and hopefully you know nobody will make any mistakes after after that so really that's that's part of the investment that we we make into creating great sops if i could just add a little bit more value to that is it's important to think like as a business owner what resources do i have available to me to my team to use and at the end of the day we have youtube and google and that's freaking huge for 99% of businesses out there so i think it's important to allow your mind to expand and say what if i just link to this youtube video here in this section here and hyperlink the timestamp when they actually give the action steps. What if I link to this blog here or this blog here, pull all those resources together, hyperlink them, use a screenshot tool. And with that screenshot tool, you can say step one, step two, step three, click, 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 boom. And next thing you know, your SOP starts to look very professional and all you did was kind of compile information together. So that's another quick tip. Right, right. Okay, so that's that's great. That's mostly in the in the second part, right? In the instructions part, where where, where happens, you know, yes. the action points and the images. All right. So let actually that's uh, where, where I want to go now next. So let the let's talk about the instructions. What are the 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 elements that we must include in the in the instruction part? So the steps. Yeah, and I think that's why it's important to think of the overall flow, the overall experience of the user. And that's, again, that's why I like to make the video because that virtual assistant can pause it, write down the step, pause it, write down the step. You always, always want to have it nice, nice, clean layout. That's why I have a template that's already have it bulleted out. The SOP on how to make SOP makes it, shows the user how to change the bullet point paragraph, what format we want and why we want that format. And just kind of maintaining that format throughout. What ends up happening sometimes is if you have a virtual assistant that makes their own format or they're using a, a different template, over time, things start to look completely different. People use different tools. They, they, they And it's okay at first, but if it, you let it go on long enough, you have that divergence of, uh, of communication in your team, and it just makes it a little bit harder for people to pick up. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing when it comes to creating the steps. Uh, other than that, just making it actionable. And it's okay because it's a Google document. It's okay to just break things down. If you think it's too long or you're or too lazy, just hit enter, tab, enter, tab, enter, tab. And then when you're done, you go back through the SOP and you're like, hey, if I were to only look at just the, the words on, on the text, can someone figure this out? And that's I think it's important to run that check through yourself. Uh, after that, you know, it's, it's pretty easy. It, it, it kind of runs itself. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right. You you kind of need to go with the beginner's mind, like uh, with the eye of somebody who's looking at that for the first time, and see uh, if you understand it. You know, after if you're if you're mm -hmm. looking at it the first time, right? So that's that's another good tip. So let's um, let's try to to find you know uh, give, give give people uh, all the, the the most advanced. Uh, tips let's say uh, you can can you share yeah, with us sure. something that you know really in general maybe something that we haven't spoke about yet so uh what mm -hmm. to make like a really good sop yeah I, I kind of hinted to it before but the power of sops comes from hyperlinking one sop to another so i'm at the point now with one function of my business where uh one of the things i do is i sell supplements online i'm able to with this process i've created just say the word to merit gummies and my team having used SOPs, just SOPs, it's a long SOP. It's like 15 of them all hyperlink. Just by saying the word to merit gummies, they are able to go to the manufacturer, pull the catalog, get download the, the template file, do research on to merit gummies, identify a color palette with keyword SOP. They're able to identify the keywords that they need to rank for. With that, it hands, gets handed off to the copywriter. The copywriter already made the SOP for writing titles and bullets descriptions. They identify those things. They create the bullets. They look at another template, another reference of the manufacturer's website for what legal, legalities they should look at. They send that, they hyperlink that to the next person who's the designer. They design the label based off of everything, the color pad, all that. They create the images all from an SOP, all from templates, everything. And next thing you know, it's live online. And I have an SOP that automatically creates, pulls those keywords, creates an initial PPC campaign, takes those photos, puts them on Pinterest, hyperlinks them back with a, with a super URL, doing all kinds of things. And all that was built out by SOPs. Now, it didn't start by me just telling a virtual assistant, go ahead and do this. It started as little functions. I first identified how, how to design it. Okay, so this is the general process. Jay's kind of done it. I know what I want. Boom, I'll make a video on it. This is the design process. That becomes a design SOP. Then you hit, you hyperlink them together and pull those resources from different places. You can find that article on the top 10 things, not to say on a supplement warning label, all these different things. You can run these different checks and then slowly over time, you can remove yourself from that process and that automation will start to happen. So that's kind of that, that high, high level picture of interlinking things together and pulling resources from different areas into the, a living, breathing document that will grow and expand over time. Right. Okay. That's, that's very interesting. So when you, just to be clear, when you said before about the, the, the supplement, so you're saying, for example, your team, it's now trained uh, with all the SOPs to pick, uh, the, the, uh, you know, they, they can do basically the whole process that you mentioned, just starting from a, from a keyword, like you said. Right. So, um, then, then I'm, I'm curious to, to know, like, how did that, process look from the beginning to actually reaching that level of say automation uh -huh. with your so how people can can start with uh, with this process and yeah. something similar yeah like yours. Uh, yeah yeah i would think maybe start with the process that you either want to outsource in terms of time so let's say it's um one example for this you know primarily e-commerce selling type of uh, businesses so let's just say like product research for one right well one thing i do is I have a spreadsheet like a little Excel sheet with a bunch of like formulas and stuff on it. And instead of deep diving into every single product idea that I possibly have, what I do is I add the keyword or just the idea to an Excel spreadsheet. Whenever I'm thinking about something, I'll open the sheet, I'll type the little word in, and then it's that's it. Every week, my virtual assistant will look at that list and based off an SOP that I've created, will say, hey, go to Helium 10, put the main keyword in here, um, put, scrape that, get the number of views, put that in here, do all this. Stuff. It's just a quick video that I made because it's a process I've already done. But with that video, they, they constantly are adding to it, looking at it. Next thing I know, every week, all my ideas are sorted out and using this formula, given a final score, and I can kind of see what the most important products for me to look at. And that's a really quick way of starting this process. Look at something that you currently already know how to do, or at least half of it, Make, make a video for that, make a quick checklist for that, and then just start going off to the races. One of the things I did with my first virtual assistant when I had my first time I was on FBA business is I was like, everything's so critical. Everything is so critical. I don't want to hand it off to a VA that I don't trust yet to mess up inventory or to run a PPC campaign and spend all my money, even though they've never done PPC in their life, like that kind of balance. So what I did was my first full-time virtual assistant who's still with me today is I tried to stay within my area of, my area of knowledge, which was Amazon FBA was here. 
But I also knew about merch by Amazon, like print on demand t-shirts on Amazon. Why well, I knew Amazon really well, title, bullets, images. I knew what I wanted for keyword re- or for product research within a certain area. So what I did was I said, Hey, I watched a few YouTube videos on print on demand. I was like, okay, hey, watch these videos. Now follow this process and come up with a list of niches. So they did that. They watched the YouTube video, came up with a list of niches. And then I said, okay, now try make an SOP on this. We can find a bunch of niches pulling from these three YouTube videos that have a process, right? And then they went through that. Next thing you know, for a solid nine months, this person was literally doing merch by Amazon, print on demand t-shirts for me, getting profitable while I was launching products. And that was able, I was able for me to integrate them together because they were making the title, which I knew how to do it next. And then it just became super easy. And then that overlap between merch by Amazon to sourcing suppliers or PPC became that much more beneficial. So when I made that full switch over, uh, it was just integrated into my business extremely well uh, while decreasing the risk to the most important thing and expanding on areas that I wanted to go after, but wasn't able to in terms of 80, 20, what's most important, but still building a team and building a system around me that serves me to this day. Okay. Wow. Sounds great. Sounds great. So that actually leads me to, to my next question. I'm thinking, how can you uh, make sure that th- these people are actually following the processes that you are, you have implemented? Uh, do you use any system mm-hmm. to, to keep them accountable? Yeah, for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you'll know if it's not working, if your business is falling apart, right? And uh, yeah, don't get me wrong, I still, every now and then I see a virtual assistant uh, or someone on my team kind of like miss a step because they've done it so many times and they, they didn't see that I inserted a step to the SOP. So one of the first things I do is I require all my full-time virtual assistants to have a second screen. And part of that is so that they require the SOPs on one side and they're working on another I do time tracking software that will screenshot their computer every 10 minutes just to hold them accountable in case I ever want to look. If I ever need to go back and be like, what were they working on? I can quickly look and see, yes, the SOP was being used. When you use Google Documents, Google Document will automatically show every single change. You can go to like view file, see version history and see who changed what. So in terms of editing SOPs, if things are being followed, it makes it super easy because everything's now cloud hosted and, and verifiable and trackable. So that's one way I go about doing it. If they're not following it, I just generally remind them, hey, reference the SOP, right? Hey, you messed up here, reference the SOP. I also have an internal system that will run checks on the most important function of my business. I call it a reoccurring schedule. It's an Excel spreadsheet. People are tagged to, to double check one another. Hey, go back once a week, make sure that your time tracking is correct. If it's not, send me a direct message after you've updated the, this spreadsheet explaining why it wasn't correct or something like that, right? And there's an SOP for that. I'm some a virtual assistant created an SOP. So I, I kind of try and create some overlap where they're self-checking each other and then high level I'm asking myself, are my KPIs being met? Is, is it actually being done? How can it be done better? And just kind of like uh, allowing them, not like bashing them when they don't do it, but just gently reminding them consistently, hey, you forgot. Hey, don't forget about this. If that happens one too many times during a probation, probation period, you, you actually find that out pretty quickly within a month if they're able to follow that system or not. Um, and that just comes with having a good system and having like a good open door um, culture, I would say. Okay, wow, sounds, sounds very interesting. I think uh, that's that's really one whole topic that maybe we can cover uh, in, in a future episode, like how to keep people accountable and uh, and uh, creating systems in order to, to do team building. Uh, that's that's really interesting. Uh, let's uh, you know have uh, you know the l- last uh, question before we we close. I'm curious to to have like your quick one or two common mistakes that you think people should avoid and what, what can we do to uh, to avoid. Okay, common mistakes for an SOP. Hmm. To be the common the common thing is not is not getting started. I know it sounds so basic, but not getting started creating the system. Once you once that momentum is built, the idea of just get the fr- just get the video made. Like there's so many times where I have a task, and I'm like, oh, I gotta pull up six different tabs and do this, all these things, you know, like just make the loom, record your voice, do something, link to a YouTube video with a timestamp, and make the SOP, use a template and just get it started. Cause once the ball's rolling, it, it's a snowball effect that will happen in the business, and then you'll see the power of it and you can kind of take it wherever you want. Uh, so just start and you'll see that snowball effect happen. That's probably the biggest thing. Right, right. So, guys, just start. <laughs> right. So that that's really yeah. one of the biggest tips. Yeah. So, Reggie, uh, where people can find you if they would like to to reach out or or need help from you? Sure. Yeah, they can find me at reggieyoung.com. dot uh, I also have a, a membership. It's twenty dollars a month. It's accessible for anyone of any income level. And in there, I have a bunch of SOPs, all the initial trainings, like five hours that 
my team watches, which is you'll, you'll see that access to the how to create an SOP, which is the second video they watch. But by the time they're done with the five hour training, they know how to manage a website, WordPress, Shopify, basics of Amazon, basics of customer service, basics of photo video creation, basics of working together as a project management system, all these different things, plus more courses online, everything inside the vault. But at the end of the day, you can find me and everything at reggieyoung.com. Awesome. Awesome. That was great. Thank you, Reggie. So guys, remember, as always, I repeat you at the end of this, of the episodes, the key to success is to emulate the best. So make sure you, you go to apply what you have learned today from Reggie and remember to, to download the SOPs on how to create SOPs from this episode show notes at the sellerprocess.com or in the description in the YouTube video. And, you know, make sure that you really start implementing what you, you're learning and what you're, um, what our guests share and Reggie today just shared some very valuable tips that you should implement in your business uh, starting from today because these are, these are very actionable topics uh, that you, 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 you can, can start really today. So thank you, Reggie, again. Uh, I hope to see you, uh, hope to see you soon in, in uh, next step. Definitely. Yes, thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Hey, entrepreneurs, I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something from the interview. If you're serious about creating systems for your business, automating processes and building up your team so that you can transfer the tedious daily tasks in order to focus on more high level strategic tasks and work on your business and not in your business. I've created a guide for Amazon sellers named Capturing Systems and Creating SOPs that you can find at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook, where you will learn how to leverage systems and SOPs in your Amazon business so that you can accomplish more by working less, optimize your time, automate and delegate tasks and reap the benefits of being a true business owner and not simply an operator in your own business. Go download the ebook at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook and start implementing all the tips and insights that I share with you and leave us a review or a comment to let us know how, how the content we are sharing here is making an impact in your business and have a productive week.